Duolingo had a major update and people are pissed. Now the question is, does the new Duolingo update actually make things worse or is the entire language learning community just being a little bit dramatic? My name is Jamie, I'm a language coach. Let's talk about what Duolingo does better now what it does worse, and what I think they should do to improve in the future. So obviously the biggest difference with the new Duolingo update is that instead of this like triangle kind of tree thing that they used to do, where you got to choose which lessons you were doing at any given time, there is now one path. And like anything else, there are pros and cons. One thing that I really like is that Duolingo stories are right in the actual lessons. So before, if you were studying a language that has stories available on Duolingo, you would go through the lessons and then you would go over to stories kind of whenever. As a personal preference, I did not like that because I was very, very confused as to when it was time to go to those stories because you got access to the stories based on how many crowns you had, which meant how many lessons you had completed but it didn't really differentiate between going through the same lesson multiple times to really conquer it or going through more lessons at a more surface level level. So personally, I would get really confused as to when I was supposed to go to the stories and when I needed to focus more on the actual lessons. Now the stories are right in the midst of all the lessons. So when you're at a point in the lessons where it's appropriate to read and listen to that story, you kind of, you have to go to the story. There's no other choice, which of course is really helpful for things like comprehension and actual use of the language. But that does mean that you have to go through every single lesson. So if you don't want to go through the stories, you really don't have any choice. Not only do you have to go through the stories, but you also have to go through every single lesson. This can be really frustrating for people like me who process things really quickly, especially in different languages. With the old version of the Duolingo tree, I used to skip through as many lessons as I could just because I would get bored if I had to go through the same lesson over and over and over again. Now with the update, I don't have a choice. I have to go through every single lesson. Everybody has to go through every single lesson, all the same exact lessons. This is really frustrating and actually presents a barrier of motivation, which is like the complete opposite of what Duolingo is trying to accomplish. Their whole thing is making it easy, making it motivating, making it exciting to learn a language. But when you hit that wall of having to study something, do something, learn something that you don't necessarily want to do, as creating more obstacles. Suffice to say, I'm really not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of those kinds of obstacles in language learning in general, but especially with Duolingo. The next thing that I really like about the new Duolingo update is that it's much more simple. With the old version of Duolingo, you had a choice of how to move forward and when to move forward. You had the choice of whether you wanted to take the same topic, the same subject, like 30 lessons in a row, or if you just wanted to skip past and move on to the next topic. Thing is that also caused a lot of confusion and frustration in some ways. So many language learners would always be asking the best way to go through the Duolingo tree if they need to go through every single lesson in one topic before moving on to the next topic, or if they could get a general idea of one topic before moving to the next topic and then going back and reviewing that older topic. And then don't even get me started on the cracked lessons where basically at any time three individual lessons would be cracked at any given time and that was supposed to remind you to review those lessons but it wasn't actually necessary and also like i said it was only three different lessons so if you just let them sit then it didn't really do anything and honestly the way that you approach those lessons didn't really matter nearly as much as people like to think so a lot of people spent way too much time over analyzing how to do the Duolingo tree in the best way. So now, like I said, there is one way to do it. There's one path, there are really no options. It makes the process of learning a language with Duolingo much more simple and straightforward. So you spend less time hyper analyzing what you're supposed to be doing and instead you just take action and do it. On the other hand, this new simple route does make a lot of assumptions. The thing that was great about the old version of Duolingo is like I said, you could go through the lessons at any pace. If it took you 10 lessons to really get a hang of one topic, you could take those 10 lessons. Or if you really got a hang of it really quickly and you just needed like three lessons, you could just take three lessons and then move on. Now there is an exact specific number of lessons for everybody to take, which unfortunately does not allow for a lot of flexibility. It makes a lot of assumptions of what people want and need in order to learn a language for their own brain. 
I personally am a big supporter in learning a language in a way that works for you, at a pace that works for you, in a way that makes you happy. And with this new Duolingo update, it's it, it kind of steps away from that a bit. In fact, it really steps away from that because it doesn't give you any options as to what you're learning. There is one thing to learn and you're gonna learn it or else you're just kind of stuck. Not only does this feel less accessible, but it is less accessible, especially for people who need to be reviewing a lot constantly over time in order to really be confident in what they're learning. It's possible to do this, but it's a lot more difficult. And the way that the new Duolingo update works, it's not really meant to be used in that way. The next thing I really like about the new Duolingo update is the opportunity to work on your speaking and listening comprehension separately. If you're just going through the normal Duolingo lessons, they give you speaking and listening exercises, but given your situation, what you're doing, you might not have the opportunity to make noise and listen to things. And so they give you the option to turn that off for 15 minutes or an hour or whatever it is. Problem is, if the only opportunity you got to practice your speaking was when you're going through the tree and you had to turn it off every time, you would never get any practice whatsoever speaking. Now, if you get tired or bored of the tree and reviewing your stories, you can go and spend your time specifically on speaking exercises. It is still pretty simple and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but it really is the first step just getting you to look at sentences and repeat them. And the fact that you have the opportunity to practice saying these words and sentences without the use of the trees and having to focus on that, it does make it a little bit more accessible to practice your speaking. I know for me personally, when I'm going through the tree, I don't really wanna work on speaking. I'm, I'm much more focused on actually learning the grammatical concepts that I'm supposed to be understanding. But again, that could just be a personal preference. And while it's great that they wanna focus a little bit more on speaking, they're also focusing more on translation and timed exercises. Now I already have a whole video on why translation is not the greatest, so you can watch that video. But suffice to say that it's really not the most helpful if your goal is conversation. But what's even worse with the new Duolingo update is the timed exercises. If you want more of an XP boost and you want more rewards, then you can go through timed exercises where you have to get 100% correct answers within a certain amount of time or you lose. While on the surface level, this seems really fun and easy, it really does promote a lot of bad unhealthy habits. For example, it teaches language learners to really focus on that perfection and getting out the words as quickly as possible, which is not important when it comes to having foreign language conversations. These timed practices and timed exercises are putting so much stress on how quickly you're functioning and like not really thinking that much and just acting. So whether or not you even understand what's going on, you're just kind of moving as quickly as possible because you don't want to run out of time. So many language learners struggle with anxiety when it comes to speaking their foreign language as it is, that we don't need another thing that really pushes that anxiety and kind of congratulates us and promotes that anxiety. When it comes to just like a fun game, that's fine. But if you're using Duolingo in order to actually use the conversation, I would suggest avoiding this practice. It's not always easy, kind of sneaks up on you, but it really, it, it's really a great way to make you feel really bad about your language learning. Language learning is not a competition. I know that Duolingo teaches us to treat it like a competition in some way, especially with the leagues, but it's not a competition. And I really suggest you avoid these kinds of features of Duolingo. The next thing I like about the new Duolingo update is more of a focus on comprehension. Now, obviously this is less apparent in the beginning phases of the Duolingo tree and more as you get more advanced. But instead of focusing on just regurgitating information constantly, there are more opportunities to prove your ability to understand what's happening. I really like the step away from just translating constantly all the time and instead given a very short like audio clip or text and prove that you understand, generally speaking, what's going on with this audio clip or text. Well, a lot of Duolingo is really focused on keeping it kind of brainless so it's accessible and interesting and all that kind of stuff. I really approve of these less surface level and more comprehension-based activities that are teaching you to actually function in the language. It ain't everything, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. While there are more comprehension-based activities, the gamification is out of control. Obviously, Duolingo is known for its gamification, it's known for the cute little owl, and it's known for all the fun sounds and how easy it is to feel successful. But they have doubled down hard on this concept and 
I don't think it's for the better. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of fun stuff and a little bit of, you know, making it a game. But honestly, I feel like it was enough as it is. And now it's even worse. So now, instead of just having, you know, a set streak that you want to achieve, a set number of XP that you want to achieve every day, and the Duolingo leagues where you're in competition with random people, as well as the friends that you make on Duolingo. Now there's also daily quests. There's monthly quests. They no longer simply suggest you maintain a streak, but they essentially force you to by forcing you to declare how long you're gonna stick to your language learning with Duolingo. There's also a timer boost for those timed activities that I'm really not a big fan of. And there's a whole other final league. So before, the top league you could be in for competition is the Diamond League. Now, not only can you achieve number one in that Diamond League, but if you continue through it, there's three more Diamond Leagues where basically as long as you maintain enough XP over three weeks, you get three pieces of a diamond. Honestly, it's too much. And that is my professional opinion. If you really need that much gamification to keep you going with your language learning, something is going wrong. If you need that much extrinsic motivation, then you are completely lacking in your internal motivation and you're not actually gonna learn things. That said, at the end of the day, there are pros and cons to everything. In my opinion, a lot of Duolingo has become a little bit less fun, a little bit more functional, which could be a good thing. I do believe there is a level of people not liking change, but we're gonna have to see how it goes as time goes on. Now the question is, in my professional opinion, how could Duolingo be better? What updates could they make in the future to make Duolingo a more useful language learning app for everybody? The first thing that I would like to see is taking the speaking a step further and having speaking prompts. Now, like I said, I really like how there is a separate option to practice your speaking, but regurgitating sentences is only the first step. I would really like to see some basic, simple prompts to have you get used to producing the language on your own. Now, this could be something as simple as introducing yourself in the language or describing a picture or describing what you're wearing right now. It doesn't have to be complex and it also doesn't have to include any kind of feedback. Finding out a way to lead language learners to practice speaking the language would be amazing. Not only would it be great for actual practice of the language, but language learners would also have the option to record what they're saying and keep track of it, um, send their recording to a friend or a tutor for feedback, any number of things. That would make Duolingo so much more useful. The next thing that I would like to see Duolingo do is provide the option to get rid of all of the gamification. If you go into the settings of your account, you can get rid of some of the gamification, but not all of it, not even close. These perks are Duolingo's bread and butter, and I really wish that they would allow you to completely get rid of them and focus just on the information and the learning. I think it would make it much more accessible to a lot of language learners because so many language learners hate this gamification because it's so distracting to them that they can't use Duolingo. If it makes you happy and it keeps you motivated, that's fine, but there are some people who really dislike it and I would really like the opportunity to turn it off completely. The next thing that I would suggest is to offer language learners more flexibility. Now, I totally understand why they want to have the very strict, simple approach that's new and it's really hard for people to get on board with and that's fine but I really do think we have to acknowledge that people learn differently. Some people learn more slowly than others. Now this could be something as simple as providing an option for how many times you want to review any given topic, which means how many times you have to take the same lesson before you move on to the next topic. So that for me, instead of being bored by taking the same lesson over and over again, I can just move on to the next topic. And then somebody who needs a lot more review and a lot more repetition could have even double the amount of review so they can really grasp a hold of what they're trying to learn before they move forward. This would make Duolingo a lot more accessible to different people who learn at different paces. And the next thing that I would love to see Duolingo change with this next update is to completely get rid of the timed practice. In my professional opinion, the timed practice doesn't do anything for the actual retention of the language. And I get how it's just like a fun little thing, but the fact is that I do believe that Duolingo focuses too much time on it, pun totally intended. 
Instead, I would love to see that timed practice going away completely and instead have those speaking prompts so we can practice speaking the language. And again, it doesn't have to be complicated, something very, very simple. Now, if you like this video, I have all sorts of videos about how to choose the right language app for yourself. I would recommend starting out with this one. My job is to help you understand what resources there are available for your language learning and how to choose those resources based on your own personal language learning journey. So if you're ready to start making educated choices about your language learning strategy, I will see you in that video.